What's up, Wisconsin? Welcome back for season four of the Inside Wisconsin Show. Who would have thunk? Trevor, John, four, four years? Four years. <laughs> Has it been four or we've done three and now we're going on four? Almost four behind the scenes, but we've done three. We're going yeah. on four. These things usually last a year. Let's be honest. Okay, good. Podcasts like, I'm going to do a podcast. And then no, people do a podcast and they're like, this is a grind. I'm not doing this. So three years in well, the start of four is impressive. And some of that is like, I feel like part of that is the subject material is helpful. It's Wisconsin, A, and we're loaded with people that are interesting to talk to in Wisconsin. If this had been on steamed vegetables, probably doesn't go as long, right? It's certainly unique. Yeah, the pizza topping podcast, they run out of stuff. They run out of stuff early, you know? So in our case, we have so many uh, good people to talk to that sometimes you bring back because they're so interesting. We need to talk to them again. Absolutely. Right? Charlie Barron's because he's just really funny. And when it was early on, you're like, okay, I don't think more than three people saw that. And you know, right. <laughs> Matt LaPay, second bite of the apple here with old Matt. You know, it was interesting to find out um, the first time about him and, and, and the Badgers and his job and about his background. Like there's just stuff happening since the last time we, it's almost like we're overdue to talk to Matt LaPay, if that makes Seriously. sense. Yeah. He's got a lot cooking and we have committed no, watch. It won't happen next year. But Barry Alvarez kicked off season one. Yep. Joe Thomas. Love you, man. Hope you're well. Kicked off season two. Coach Luke Fickle, season three. Yep. And a guy that would be on the Badger Mount Rushmore, 100% chance, Matt LePay, big-time Badger, here to kick off yeah. season Because Joe four. Thomas would not be. Being only the 93rd best Badger ever to play for mm -hmm. Barry Alvarez, he would not be on Mount Rushmore. He'll be back on. You'll see. Love you, too. Matt! LaPay, start of season four on the Inside Wisconsin Show. Here we go. The Inside Wisconsin Show is brought to you by American Family Insurance, Aaron's Company, Lane's Farm and Fleet, Capital Credit Union, Festival Foods, Quick Trip, Miller Lite, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, and the University of Wisconsin Platteville. Hey, remember to subscribe on YouTube, leave a review, smash the like button, just get with us. The voice of the Wisconsin Badgers, Mr. Matt LePay on the Inside Wisconsin Show. Good to see you again, Matt. Good seeing you guys. Um, I'm trying to list all the things that happened since we've last chatted. Uh, you've got a bunch of new analysts. We've got a new football coach. Uh, you gave up the Brewers' side hustle. Athletes now get paid in college. You were a seven-time Wisconsin sports cash year. Now you're like 10. Like, um, like what the hell, man? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where good. to start. You know where we should start? Let's start current events. Um, like, give me the requiem of the basketball team and that kind of roller coaster season. Yeah, you just you just said the word roller coaster. It, it was uh, they they started pretty well, got humbled a couple times early. Uh, Tennessee at home, no shame there. Went to Providence when Providence was really playing well. Um, got beat soundly at Arizona, which to me is as talented a team. As I, as I saw all year in college basketball, but then they were rolling. You know, they got through you know, most of December in pretty good shape. January was great. Um, and then the second half of the uh, February 1st game at Nebraska happened, and they were wobbly the rest of the way in the regular season. But then in the Big Ten tournament, it looked like they got their mojo back. You know, they played really well, beat Purdue, took Illinois to the final two minutes. Inside of two minutes, the game is tied. Problem was they didn't carry that over. They couldn't bottle that up and take it to Brooklyn. So it was uh, it was inconsistent. But I think in a big picture, they're changing how they play. Uh, they scored ten more points a game than they did last year. That's small consolation, I know, to Badger fans who witnessed what we all witnessed on Friday in Brooklyn. Um, but I still would like to think that they're in a pretty decent place moving forward um, because this isn't the score 55 and hold the other guys to 54 kind of team anymore. So they, they're, they see the landscape of college basketball. There's more offense and the Badgers had more offense this year than they've had in 30 years. John summed it up perfectly that college players get paid now. So with all of that changing literally within your tenure, how do you do on season to season being in relationship with the players invested in all of it? Cause it changes literally every year. 
Yeah, this past year they had the senior night for Tyler Wall, and you just don't know how many more nights you're going to have like that, where somebody is at a school, same school from a freshman season to your senior season. Um, you know, next year, barring the unforeseen, you know, Stephen Crow, Carter Gilmore will be back and having their final lap as college players. Uh, Max Klesman is a transfer from Wofford, but he's he's a Wisconsin guy. Um, but yeah, it is different. I, I think we just have to come to grips with the fact that um, it's becoming more and more transactional, just like, uh, you know, pro sports. Uh, we certainly see it with, with a lot of coaches, with coaching changes that take place. And you just have to, you know, accept or at least understand it's up to you whether you accept it. But we have to just understand that the college game is changing. And in a, in a lot of cases, not all, but in a lot of cases, it's transactional. You know, what's the number? Where, where can I make the most money at, at whatever school I'm going to? And that's very much like the NBA, MLB, NFL, you name it. I, I love the fact that <clears throat> it used to be you couldn't buy a kid lunch, and now the kid, uh, you need to go to the kid for lunch. Like, dude, <laughs> you can only make 20 bucks, right? Like, it's just yeah. – it's all on its head. I really did. I went to Missouri one time and took out a couple of guys on the track team that I just know. And I'm like, you know what? I think you better put down $10 so it looks like, you know, Arnold Palmer uh, or uh, Tiger famously had to send Arnold Palmer a check for like whatever it was, $13, because he ate at Bay Hill one time. And now it's this whole absurdity. From what you see from, because we always think of the Badgers, you've kind of described what that program was, right? It is, it is get them in, it is develop. It's not always the five star guy. Can they operate like that anymore? I think, John, by and large, you can your, your basic philosophy can stay the same with player development. Um, but you know, it was clearly we saw it this year with Wisconsin. One of the big reasons why it scored ten more points a game is they got a transfer named AJ Store from St. John, somebody who could get this team on average 16, 17 points a game and, and oftentimes much more than that. So I think with Wisconsin, it probably, you still need to bring in a transfer or two, but I, I think they would like to, con, like to consider themselves a program that is into player development and guys who start as freshmen, sophomores may not play a ton but there's enough promise there, assuming those guys stick with it, can become the next, you know, if not the next Frank Kaminsky, somebody who continues to get better and better. That's where I mean, quite honestly, I applaud Marquette. Uh, you know, they, they, this year, it shows that the model can still work with player development. And I don't see Wisconsin as being a program, um, at least with, with Greg Gard and, that philosophy, and his staff's philosophy. I don't think you're going to see seven or eight transfers come in. Uh, some schools do it, and you can make it work. I don't know if Wisconsin would be one of those. I forgot I'm writing down. Also, since we last talked, Frank got married. He did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> A few things have happened. Sheepers. Uh, yeah, talk to me about uh, let us let us in on what it's like to work with um, new analysts. Let's start with basketball because you got both boosts of change. Like for the first time since you got there, and and they're good dudes, but like. They're just new dudes. And the other guy you knew, you know, he finished your sentences kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with, with Mike Lucas, he had 29 years. He and I worked together, and it, it was one of those deals where we could finish each, each other's sentences. Uh, the, the cool part about this, cool and a little weird at the same time, I, you know, I was the announcer when Brian Butch was playing. Charlie Wills did some games as well for us with basketball. Um, I was in the booth when Mark Tauscher was the right tackle at Wisconsin and the Badgers were winning back-to-back -back Rose Bowl games in, in the late 90s. Um, and all of them I, I've known for a while and have worked with in some capacity. You know, Tauscher was the third guy in our booth for more than 10 years. Um, Brian does radio for, for iHeart, so I have worked with him a little bit even there. Uh, but yeah, it takes, I think, as you guys all know, it, it takes a little bit of time to get some chemistry going. But I think we had a lot of fun uh, this season, really relied on their insights as, uh, as former players. And they're all broadcasters. They've done it before. Butchie does radio and television. Charlie Wills has done some television. Mark has done it. So that has helped. It's not necessarily a ground floor thing with any of those guys. It was just a matter of okay, what, what are their strengths? And they get used to working with me. And 
Uh, but we did have a lot of fun. We, we could bust each other's chops a little bit or a lot. And it, it was a different kind of a broadcast, but uh, hopefully it was one that fans enjoyed. So you detailed the relationship you have with these guys, and it goes back to when they're 18-year-old kids. Um, so when you look at them, yes, they're your equal, right? They share time. But do you ever look at them some sort of almost parentally? Like, I can't believe you've grown up and you're full-grown adults and, you know, pay your own mortgage and that kind of thing. Yeah, at least buy lunch now and then or buy dinner. Tauscher, that's, you know, that rotator cuff problem. He can't get to his wallet quite as much as you would think for a guy that was 11 years in the NFL. Oh, no, I, I, I kid. Um, yeah, a little bit. It is a kind of, you know, proud of these guys. They were all, um, you know, Brian was a guy who was a junkie as a player. He would ask a lot of questions. We'd go down to, you know, Assembly Hall in Bloomington, you know, when Wisconsin played. Indiana, and he would ask questions about the place because it's an iconic venue. And and Charlie is, uh, you know, really he was a rough and tumble guy in the court, but a really smart guy, and would ask a lot of questions off the floor. And Tausch is Tausch, uh, just you know, he's he's wicked smart for for one thing, and uh, and I think still he takes pride in being deceptively nimble on the pickleball court. So I'll take his word for that. Um, but it is it, it is kind of funny. It just makes me feel well, I am old. And it makes yep. me feel even older that guys I covered are now my broadcast partners. Yeah, that's got to be weird. Over all the seasons with Mike Lucas and now obviously with the other guys, I would imagine that there's just a different level of energy, right? We had Butchie on the show, and that guy, like we had to turn his mic down. He won the <laughs> energy award. Just different. Uh, yes, there is no shortage of energy with, with Brian Butch, for sure, because he loves the game. Um, and he's he's just an enthusiastic guy by nature. Uh, he and Charlie, they're they're both really good, but they're both different in how that's the beauty of this industry, right? There are a thousand and one ways to do it, and and those two guys, their approaches are are different, but both effective. But yeah, Butchie is it's it's really interesting with him because he'll do fifteen or so games for for Fox or the Big Ten Network, and you've got to be down the middle. Uh, with the Badgers, he he kind of he rides that emotional roller coaster like a fan does. I guess we both were. I mean, Friday night there was a a, a layup that was missed that could have cut the deficit to four, and we both kind of we both sunk our heads. We're right by the Westwood One guys, and they look over and they're laughing at us. Uh, but to, to see how much, see how invested all those guys are. Tausch, the same thing with, with with football. I mean, these are guys who have all you know, they played professionally. They're they're successful now, but they still ride that wave with, with the Badgers, with football and basketball. So that, that part's pretty cool. So those mics change, but yours has remained the same. But your title's different since the last time we talked to you. Director of Broadcasting for Learfield. It's a legacy role. What is the definition of that? Um I really don't know what director of broadcasting is. It's just like, make sure that we've got somebody to fill in for X broadcast if we have a conflict with with, with talent. Um, I mean, I don't really have the uh, fire and hire uh, ability, maybe a hire if there's an opening, but I quite honestly don't really want to have that. You know, it's kind of weird if you're already, if you're still on the air, you're not going to determine futures of, of fellow broadcasters if there's I, I don't create the openings I fill them or I help fill them when I can um I'm looking in the contract for the the word lifetime and I still can't <laughs> seem to find it they did put it out in, in this release in this video like great sounds good um uh, as I think as we all know I'm not sure there's any such thing as a lifetime contract but in, in a business that doesn't offer a ton of security maybe I've got a little bit, or maybe just they know how how old I am, and they know that he's probably not going to be doing this too much longer anyway. So let's make it look good. <laughs> right. If you die in the job, you have a lifetime contract. That's the exactly. only way to go. I need if you go in the under sixteen timeout in the second half. Now you have had a lifetime contract. Is yeah, contract that's how, fulfilled when it when it comes through. Uh, we should we we've talked about the new guys, and I feel like in in our last conversation we talked so much about you and your background and those things. And and I feel like maybe we should. Um, and again, we said requiem for the basketball. See, I don't want to be like that, but just maybe, just like a, a parting word about uh, Mike Lucas and what he meant to the program and to all of us that listened to him for so long. Um, you know, sort of a proper uh, um, perspective on that guy's career in in the booth as a writer with the university and all he did there. Yeah, it's uh, how much time do we have? Go on, go on for <laughs> twenty nine years. 
Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, I mean, he he has covered Wisconsin athletics for more than fifty, uh, for more than fifty years. So there, there's certainly a passion for the program programs. Uh, you know, he, he covered, he did uh, color uh, analyst work for hockey for years and years before he joined me for the football and basketball broadcast starting in 1994. Um, his ability as a writer. I've always thought an underrated part of, of his um, skill set is as an interviewer. He's just really good. I think he makes uh, makes the athletes, coaches feel comfortable, whoever he's interviewing. So that was, I mean, the whole thing was, you know, was tough to put it mildly um, because I think he's someone who, you know, would do this as long as he is, is able to. Um, but I also will say that I don't know if you guys are aware. He made it public uh, a few weeks ago. He's he's battling uh, colon cancer right now, mm -hmm. so he's dealing with some really, you know, obviously much bigger issues than not being in the broadcast booth with me or, or courtside at basketball games. But he's still writing. He's uh, for the Capital Times. Still does a, he does a podcast with Tom Oates every week. Um, so he's staying staying busy. But his uh, I put it to you this way. I never had to worry about him being prepared for a game. You know, yeah. how he, his delivery, his insights are going to be different than that of a former player, but I never once, never, never once had to worry about him being prepared because he was, if anything, he was over prepared, which is what we're all supposed to do. But he, <laughs> he absolutely was over prepared for every game that he called. One more before we jump to a quick break, Matt. Speaking of being prepared, when Coach Moore made his reappearance at the Cole Center this season, I don't think any of us were prepared for that, maybe yourself included. I was at a little townie bar having lunch, getting ready to watch the Badger game, and all of a sudden that happened. I'm like, well, I'm falling in public now. Yeah. What was that like for you? Yeah, we knew, um, you know, obviously what, what they were looking to do here. And there have been, been a lot of tears uh, from – from me and from hundreds of thousands probably of people uh, who, who know him or know of him and know the story there. Um, you know, they were, I think they were looking to do this earlier in the season, but you know, just some logistics and, and getting some of his teammates there um, that, that didn't make it possible. But yeah, I, I, I was kind of nervous because they wanted me to introduce him and I thought, you know, I, I can't cry now. I mean, I have four <laughs> lines here. I can't screw this up. So I did all that before because I had seen the video. It had been months. And then I saw the video again um, that, you know, John Roach and, and his group are, are putting together. So saw it on Tuesday of that week um, on the plane. We were flying to, I think, Bloomington, Indiana. Started crying there. There was a, a, a reception Friday night, the night before the game against mm -hmm. Illinois. Kind of losing it again, and then Saturday, just the look. I'm looking up in the crowd, you know, ready to introduce him, and you could just see the look of surprise uh, on the faces of the fans at the Cole Center. And when Rashard Griffith um, brought Howard out, I'm not sure the place has ever been louder than it than it was that that day, um, on that Saturday afternoon in early March. It was uh, with Rashard Griffith there, Michael Finley, Tracy Webster, Chris Conger, Sean Carlin, teammates of, of, uh, of Howard's back in the 90s. Um, it was it was heartwarming and probably heartbreaking at the same time because uh, to know Howard Moore is to love him and to know his, his impact uh, on the university, his impact even outside of the Wisconsin community. Butchie was working a game um, at Northwestern for television. And he was talking with Chris Lowry, one of the Wildcats assistants, and they were all watching and the impact there, how it's a Chicago guy. Um, and I think anybody across the country with a bas college basketball connection uh, who knows Howard tuned into that. And you couldn't help but just just feel the emotion in the building that day. It was a day that, uh, that no one will ever forget. And by the way, his son Jarrell spoke at halftime, and he was flawless, senior at Middleton High School, um, and he was, you know, I, I was a little jealous. That guy was super smooth in his two minutes that he spoke to the crowd at the Cole Center. Just a really mature kid, and I cannot possibly imagine what it's been like for him and that entire in the entire family over the last coming up on five years now. Mm. 
it is amazing how we steal ourselves in times when you have to. Like Trevor's always like, how do you how do you give a score of a Missouri or Wisconsin game when they lose a painful loss? And you just kind of do, right? And you're mm-hmm. and then you get done with it. And you also think, God, am I just that heartless that I made it through that and I didn't cry? <laughs> you have that, you know, you know what you gotta do, and you steal yourself to do that. And then you're like, maybe I'm just a black hearted soul that I didn't cry during that, and I really should have. And I hope mm-hmm. people don't think that. Uh, Trev said he wanted to go to break. I got one more because I feel like this would be a great transition because we've talked a lot of basketball where you are, and we're going to probably get into football. That's next. Uh, do you have an off season? What does your off season look like? Cause I'm like, okay, basketball's over and we're not kicking off again until the first or, or the last week, of August. Well, this, uh, as we record this, this week's pretty light, but the uh, spring football, you know, they, I missed the first practice last Friday, doggone it. Uh, but I'll, I'll be around for some of that. And there are some functions, uh, that'll be going on either university connected or other. Uh, but walking away from the Brewers at the end of 2021, that did open up some stuff for me over the summer to, to head up to the cabin up in uh, Vilas County. Um, so we'll try to get up there as much as we can. But yeah, but for me, it really, the, the true off season probably really gets started early May, but uh, you know, it's not heavy lifting right now either. So it, it starts to back off a little bit, knowing that I don't, other than a spring game, maybe I don't have a game game until, uh, was it August 31st? I think the first game for, for Badger football this next season. Sounds like he's got time on his hands. So let's take a break and come back more with Matt LePay in a bit on the Inside Wisconsin Show. The Inside Wisconsin Show is brought to you by American Family Insurance, Aaron's Company, Lane's Farm and Fleet, Capital Credit Union, Festival Foods, Quick Trip, Miller Lite, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, and the University of Wisconsin Platteville. Hey, remember to subscribe on YouTube, leave a review, smash the like button, just get with us. So I feel like it was spring, but now it's not spring. We just got six inches of snow here in Wisconsin the other day. I know like the don't wow. don't count your chickens and whatever the case may be. But either way, the the yeah. smoker was rolling here at the the old house, and so you've already done season. that. You oh, fell yeah. for oh, it. Yeah. Oh, I totally fell for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you okay? So my buddy Brett, we're talking about festival foods and all the different things that you can kind of put on a grill when you go to festival: kebabs and steaks and chicken breasts that are stuffed with more things than just chicken. But yeah. my buddy Brett brought up the other day that he had to have a green egg, and they don't sell those at festival foods. But do you have one? No, no. What am I? But I, 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 I enjoy people? visiting people who do. Okay, so they really yeah. are a step above, huh? Yeah, yeah, they're great, and you just you know. It's it's good if you got a long you know you got got a long time to let it sit, you know. You talk about your fan patience. Just put it in there, set it, and forget it, and then go about your day. And then you know, just walk by it once in a while so you can smell. That's the biggest thing, right? It's like sure, especially sure. if you can grill. I don't know where yours is placed, with the back door open, you know, in our case, so it kind of wafts into the house. You know, like, okay, I'm ready to go. You know, we, we do have a sort of Pavlovian response to those kind of things. You're like, wow, that's uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to go with that. But uh, I was not I have not been suckered in. I'm like, I know this happens. Every time, every time I finish up the insulate track meet, the coaches always go the indoor one. They go, all right, real track starts tomorrow because they get outdoors. And invariably, that's the guy like from Texas A&M, because I go home and I'm like, here's the snow. Practice for real track has been canceled today because here's a picture of the snow that's coming yeah. down in my front yard. So Spring we, had that. we had this week. We had snow and sleet and rain. Enjoy. But that doesn't mean we can't give we, we can't have hope, can't start stocking up, can't you know, we can start stopping stocking up. We can start making plans for that. You know, we're we're not quite putting the sweet corn on the grill yet. You know, we got to let that grow. But there's a lot of stuff that you can, you know, listen, the brewers are opening the season. If that's not exactly. a reason to go throw bratwurst on your grill. Bingo. And didn't you tell me Festival Foods has like 912 different varieties of them and you ate them and I just all saw in the sitting October or something Fest, like that? Yeah, one time. Oktoberfest brats, cheddar bratwurst. There's cheddar. Yeah. Yeah, go to festival and stock up on brats. They freeze mm-hmm. well, and you can eat as many as you can in a sitting. I did pour out a whole mess full of brats. Well, it's yours was just the variety. Like you had the sixty-four Crayola box of bratwurst that you yeah. brought home and tried. You that. know, burnt sienna and all those <laughs> things that they had. Aquamarine, no, no. far better flavors, including the original bratwurst 
of Oktoberfest broths at Festival Foods. Happy grilling season, even though it's not done snowing. Forget it. Just do it. Time for another top five list here on the Inside Wisconsin Show, presented by the University of Wisconsin Platteville, a top university in Wisconsin. UW Platteville ranks in the top 20 for regional universities in the Midwest because of its quality academic programs, expert faculty, and affordable tuition. Learn more at uwplatte.edu. Man, we've we've talked a lot about UW Platteville over the last three years. Engineering and yeah, uh, there was a dairy program that they're super proud of, and they are going up in admission at UW Platteville, which is not the norm in universities and colleges across the country. So oh, they do. There, are fewer, there, are, there are fewer graduating seniors. There are less. It's funny. Applications are up because that common app, right? You can just there's a common app. You, your kids aren't there yet. Get this common app. So you can apply to like 12 schools, as many as you want, as long as you've got the 75 bucks to pop off in them because it's one app. Don't have to do them by hand. But there are fewer. The baby boomers are gone. People are uh, families are small. There's so there are fewer graduating seniors, but there are a lot more um, applications so that they're growing is a is a great sign for them. Yeah, it really is. All right, so we mentioned at the top, this is the start of season four, and our world runs in seasons. And so today's yeah. top five list is what were the biggest sports stories here in Wisconsin yeah. that happened during season three? You have a list, and I, I I feel like I could probably guess a few. Right, because we have, right, we have everybody like, oh, the new year is January 1st. And then the NFL, what the NFL starts is March 13th. Or so. so there's all kinds of different ones. We don't have to just be slaves to the Julian calendar. We're okay. Right. Right. Our calendar, it runs basically, um, uh, what is it, April 1 to March 30th, basically, is the March way our goes. So these are, yeah, we, you know, so in our case, we're just, rev- it's just a year in review. That's all we're doing. I like our it. top five Wisconsin sports stories for season three. Uh, number five, again, these are mine. Okay. Yeah, so you can point out others that I've missed or when you go through. I might. I might. Number five, I have uh, the news that uh, Green Bay and the Packers are going to get the 2025 draft. Big time. Big time. That was huge. I can't wait for that. Man, that's going to be fun. And I don't know if I told you I'm lobbying to have that in my friend Byron's garage. uh, We've heard that once or twice. And I believe you brought up that we're going to chat with Gabrielle Dow at the Packers, the person behind the scenes for all things draft. We'll get through this year's first, but we're definitely chatting with her about that. Yep, we need to get to her. That'll be great. Uh, Number four, Mm -hmm. uh, I put the Bucks have traded for Damian Lillard. They lost deal. in the first round of the Heat, which sucked. Uh, but I, I'm going to go with the trade for Dame Lillard. Dime time. You're all right. It was with a that? bummer. It was a bummer losing. Who do we? Clearly, not big of a bummer for me to Blue remember Holiday. his name. But yeah, that was that. That was a tough pill to swallow when it happened. But I certainly Blair, think that it was a super upgrade. good dude. And now he's with the Celtics, and they have the best record in the league. And yeah. the Bucks are only like 12 games behind. So he hasn't helped anybody at all. That was uh, a big number, deal. Number three, you might, this is again, some of these are personal preference because I think you're going to go really two ranks higher than three. But anyway, uh, number three, the Badgers hire Luke Fickle. They go seven and six. First year there, like anytime the Badgers and they went sort of way outside the family, the firing of Chris was sort of unlike anything they had done. So uh, Fickle's first year in Madison. Is number three. I think we're going to be just fine. Let's be honest, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I I know, but the patience thing matters to me. Like, why do we expect these people that just come in and whoop, everything's better? Granted, Sonny did that at GB, but still. Yes. So that's where I'm at. Uh, Honorable mention down there in Madison, obviously, would be that, you know, the women's volleyball continues to go to Final Fours and the Badger hockey program rejuvenated for the dudes. Rejuvenated. Back in the tournament, which is great. Uh, number two, you want to guess what that is? So we've had a Packers, a Bucks, a Badgers. You want to guess what number two is? Brewers. Uh, the signing of Jackson Cheerio for a gazillion dollars, even though he never played a professional game. No. Um, I was going to – if Aaron Rodgers' Jordan Love thing isn't on the list, I'd be shocked about that. It's a Brewers thing. Let's go. You should be able to it's get a Brewers this. thing. Um, biggest Brewers news in the in in the last twelve months. Um, mm, why am I not getting this? What do you mean? What what? I can't believe this is what I work with every day. What? 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 Uh, Jackson Council leaves the Brewers for the Cubs. That happened. Okay. 
Okay, hold on. Why don't you hold step on. away from the show? Hold on. <laughs> Are you going to get a dunce cap or what? Okay, yes. Okay. There you go. Put the point put Mr. Yuck on there. Mr. Yuck is what he is. The poison. This stick. is a gift for my buddy Jason. I thought it was one of the coolest brewers things ever. Look at all yep. those stars. Yep. Mr. Yuck is in the middle. And yet yeah. somehow you forgot. That was in walking yeah, I just and you forgot. Didn't, I didn't want to bring it up. I try oh, not to think stop. about this. Don't even think that. You totally okay. So the council leaves the brewers is number yeah, two. For, and for the Cubs. So and that to me overshadowed winning the NL Central again. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe mm, I'm not over it yet. Oh man, when are we going? When is the game? Okay, go ahead. I know there are five stages. My day. I feel like I'm through all of them except anger. <laughs> but you never know. Uh number one was the Packers making the playoffs under first year quarterback yes, Jordan Love. That's so awesome. I knew that was and, on the list. And they beat the Cowboys. Like all that's one big deal. You know, I I guess that to me includes all the Aaron gets traded to the Jets um, yeah. and that he won't shut up. <laughs> that he might be, I, don't, I don't know that he'll – I don't know that the VP thing's really going to happen. But that's sort of – the Packers and Jordan Love and the playoffs, the Cowboy, it encompasses a lot. I think that's far and away the number okay. one story. It is. And so they the get the draft. Made- Packers get the draft at five. Dame Lillard, that trade is four. Luke Fickle, the Badgers, season one there is three. Council leaving the Brewers, despite winning the division again after umpteen years, is two. And then uh, people all aboard, the love train, yeah, Brother Love's Traveling Salvation Show uh, is number one. The top five things that happened during season three are here in the Inside Wisconsin Show. Thanks for bringing up Craig Council. I was, I forgot. Time to forget. <laughs> We're back to the Inside Wisconsin show. Trevor, John, and the voice of the Badgers, Matt LePay. John brought it up. Lots has changed not only in basketball and college athletics, but, oh, yeah, season one of a new head coach on the football team. How's your relationship with Coach Fickle going? Uh, It's been good. It's been good. I I did a little scouting on him uh, when I knew he was going to be hired. I talked to uh, a good friend of mine at Ohio State, my counterpart there, and then I called a guy at at Cincinnati who I don't really know that well. We've done a couple – on air things together and they both said you will you will love this guy he's great you know because it's really all about us right as broadcasters you have a good relationship with them uh and the guy at cincinnati dan horde is is his name um he said yeah when he gets to know you he'll start busting on you so just be ready and sure enough within like two or three weeks uh, a few <laughs> things that we've done together uh, that we were doing together um, he, he's not afraid to, to toss a jab. He has a lot of fun at Mark Tauscher's expense, which is which is very entertaining, I might add. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been good. Obviously, last year was uh, was a bumpy one uh, for them, but I it probably in retrospect shouldn't have been as much as as a, it should not have been as much of a surprise as maybe it was in the moment um, because they're doing things a little bit differently. Uh, the tempo of practices and, and so on and so forth. So it was, it was up and down, but I, I still think that this guy, this guy knows what he's doing. He's doubling down. I think it's safe to say on, on what they value as a program and the way they work and the off season conditioning. Um, but, but it was good, but the staff has already changed a little bit. So I can't say I know the assistants all that well, but, but Luke Fickle has been, he's been a lot of fun to work with. Uh, before I get to, to a question I have, I just want you, I need somebody to alleviate my fear that the two most powerful people in the program, you and Fickle, are Ohio <laughs> State people. And, you know, like that's just, I, I don't know, like that that troubles me on some level. I know you've built up a lot of equity in 30 years, but now you got a, now you got another guy that comes in and who knows, right? It's one we can handle, two gets together, and you never know how that thing can fester. <laughs> yeah, it was a little, you know, to be honest, I, when they – announced that they were bringing him in. I said, I thought I got away from these people at Ohio <laughs> State. Now you got another one of these guys okay. coming back, and I'm sure he's saying the same thing. In fact, I know he's saying the same thing when he yeah. found out where, where I went to school. But, you know, John, when I tell people it's what it's where you go when, you know, maybe your test scores aren't quite up to standards, you know, they <laughs> can't get into Wisconsin. So Ohio State, yeah, you're good. Yeah, we'll, we'll take you there. So uh, Hopefully people get over that, um, but I'm sure some people never will. I, I still, when I, when I get introduced somewhere and they tell me where I went to school, uh, I hear it, um, but I'm sure Luke will too. So that that's how it goes. We understand. 
right? And yeah, and you can't get away from it. You can say it just as plainly as can be. And the final score is Ohio State had 20 and the Badgers had 14 people. Go, that guy hates us. I don't know why they ever hired him. Like it doesn't, <laughs> right? At some point, you're always, it's like Dick Vitale. When your team winning, he's the best. And the second you fall behind by two, you're like, he always has hated us. He, you know, the Joe Buck, the thing, it's very hard. But I, yeah, mm-hmm. I think you built up the equity. Fickle, though, like we're kind of used to, you touched on it, kind of the Barry, the Bielema. We had a little hiccup in there. And then Chris, like that was all sort of the Barry and the Badger way. And this seems to be um, way different than that. Where do you see differences? Yeah, well, well, the, you know, when they said air raid, that was a <laughs> jolt, I think, for a lot of people. Now it turned out to not be a great passing team last year. This is going to be interesting to me, guys, because – uh, Wisconsin in its last two games, regular season games last year, played Nebraska, um, which had a really good run defense, and then went to Minnesota, the annual rivalry game. And Wisconsin won the game primarily by pounding the ball. Now they, mm-hmm. you know, Tanner Mordecai could hurt teams with his feet, and he did that. Um, but they they ran the ball, and I, I just remember uh, Luke after that last game saying, "That's where I want to live." I just I can't get past. The fact that he was a nose guard, he was a you know a guy in the trenches and a former wrestler, and I just you know air raid is great, but I just I don't know if it's going to be you know all this pretty ball that people associate with an air raid offense. He he wants balance, um, but I I think the biggest difference is you know even though last year their offense struggled mightily, you just look at what, what's happening in almost any sport we're talking about now. You better be able to put points up and they'll play. I think they'll, they'll continue to try to play at a faster pace, but you know, is this a team that's going to throw it 50 times a game? I'll have to see that to believe it. I, I still think they're going to want to run the ball, control the line of scrimmage, but just be better passing because it's been a while since Wisconsin has had you know, a pass offense. That's going to scare opposing defensive coordinators. And they would le- at least like to be balanced enough where the opposing teams have to respect both the run and the pass. Yeah, I think it was Ron Vanderkellen. I could be wrong. <laughs> well, that Russell Wilson guy was pretty good. Yeah, yeah for a year. I guess yeah, we had a little that, spike that for a year. year the, the Russell Wilson era. Yeah. Wisconsin, those four months were pretty good. <laughs> yeah, and those, but those, by the way, those two losses still pain me. Trevor and I had one of those hard losses, and I'm like, the Michigan State guy still wasn't over the line. I don't care. I'll never believe that until I die. Um and the Ohio State was just, you know, again, you know that, what? it goes all, back to you. All of that was J.J. Watt's fault. <laughs> because had he not, you know, taken the money, which was the smart thing to do, he left after the 2010 season. If he'd have been around in 2011, yeah, he would have he would have had the quarterback sacks at Michigan State and at Ohio State that would have clinched the win. So, really, if you're looking to blame some, that's what we do. Who's to blame? Yep. It's J.J.'s fault. I'm writing that down now. J.J. Watt, suck. There we go. <laughs> I Um, I can't wait for him to see this clip. That'll be great. Hey, are you ready for road trips to LA and Seattle and Eugene? How about that? Uh, Yeah, the the new the new Big Ten and uh, yeah, the Big Ten and the SEC. Those are that's where you want to be, one or the other, right? Yep. Uh, First Big Ten game for the Badgers will be at the LA Coliseum uh, against the Trojans. So selfishly. Um, I, mean, I feel pretty lucky in, in my career. I've been able to work games in a lot of iconic venues, certainly my time with the Brewers. I was able to check some more boxes there. I've never called a game in the L.A. Coliseum. I've never called a basketball game out at UCLA at Pauley Pavilion. Um, we were out in Oregon last year in the NIT, um, and the football team played out there 20-some years ago. Uh, and in Washington in the early 90s, they were there for a football game. But, yeah, this uh, – yeah, they have a, a road game in the Big Ten at USC and then a couple weeks later at Rutgers. So not your <laughs> wow. daddy's Big Ten anymore, that's for sure. Jeez. No, I was going to ask them there. Which, which of these places are you more excited to go to, L.A., Piscataway, Evanston, Iowa City, or Lincoln? There seems to be <laughs> – I like the drivable ones. <laughs> Iowa City and Evanston, are pretty, although they won't be playing in Evanston this year because their stadium renovations, yep. you know, rumor has it, it might be, you know, kind of in your neck of the woods, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But only a rumor where that game would be played this year. But yeah, it's, it's again, it, uh, 
we just have to get used to it again, understand it. And then it's up to us, whether we want to accept what's going on. And I was talking to somebody at the big 10 basketball tournament. And, so, I mean, we're just getting closer and closer to two leagues and uh, the big Ten's one of them. And I think we all know who the other one is. So if you're the ACC big 12, you know, it's a little, probably a little bit unsettling right now to say the least, but just, Again, another step toward pro sports, boys. It's just yeah. the way it is. I think, though, that they went to two leagues. It wouldn't be terrible. Like, I always say there are only two leagues now right now. There's only two leagues right now, ESPN and Fox. Yeah. Uh, those are the two leagues. But but if you could get them like that, then maybe you could make sense of it. Here we're all there, and, and you could finally go, okay, responsibly, let's just let Wisconsin play in its little quad of people. And, you know, I, I think if they – lop the top of the thing they could make more sense out of it it's just somebody that has to finally go and and do that i'm going to be really curious to see i mean i get it with with football right we all understand mm -hmm. that. and and to a to a point with men's basketball but the you know the olympic sports how how is that going to work how how's it going to work with your softball team so with yeah. your track and cross country and tennis uh how is that really going to go uh, and I think we're still in a wait and see mode there uh, as, as to how that's actually going to go and how how's it going to work with the budgets. We all know that television you know, rights mm -hmm. are, are, are huge, but that money gets spent pretty quickly um, in, in, in athletic departments. So that's the and are we going to is, is football going to break away? Is football going to just mm -hmm. completely bust loose from the NCAA men's basketball, too? Uh, it seems like with each year or each month we seem to be moving in that direction um but you know what they, what they say about college football specifically saturdays are great sundays through fridays or it can be a cluster but I mean, john you work in television the ratings yep. are pretty strong i mean really strong these national championship games on the first weekend of the ncaa tournament the numbers were really good so as long as that's happening you know some of us can wring our hands about the future of college athletics, but yeah. eyeballs are, are on it. NFL's in its own league, but the college game, football, men's basketball, and women this year with Caitlin Clark specifically, yeah. um, it's pretty good. I've had several track coaches tell me this. And by the way, thank you for calling it Olympic sport. I still, I, I when I ran, it was a non-revenue sport. We just called it, yeah. we called it what it was. <laughs> uh, but they all say, and this goes to your point, the kids bail us out every time. Mm -hmm. Right in the end, just as long as we can get out of the way and let the kids play, whatever it is they're playing, whether it's Caitlin Clark, or they'll bail us out every single time. There are other things that I don't know. I don't think to me it's not a nuanced part of it that gets lost in this because you're going to go out to Coliseum and you're going to play USC, and and all these like what happens to as a kid? All I wanted to do was the big the ten, Big Ten, win the Big Ten, and go to the Rose Bowl, and then play USC and UCLA. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that part of it right now just breaks my heart. Um, that the end of that is, hey, you won the Big Ten, and now you might get one home game, or you can go to some neutral site. Like, as a guy who called Rose Bowls and know what it meant to this fan base to go to a Rose Bowl, how do you square that? Great question, uh, because that that was the deal, right? You. you, you team that you follow in the Big Ten. If you can win the Big Ten, you go to the Rose Bowl, that's a great year. Whether that was for the national championship or you win the game and you're eighth, that it was you won the Rose Bowl. You know, when Wisconsin went out there and won for the first time in 1994, you would have thought that they won the national title. They didn't. The back-to-back -back Rose Bowl wins with Ron Dane. Neither of those games was for a national championship, but they won those games, and it was – it was remarkable. I, I do think, just my my opinion here, we're we're going to be venturing into a danger zone as fans because we're already seeing this with the fourteen playoff, and more so now as it expands to twelve, and in a couple of years, looks like fourteen. Your season isn't going to be defined by what you do regular season. It's either you win it all or it's a disappointment. That I think is a very dangerous piece of airspace or whatever, however you want to describe it. It's a, it's dangerous airspace we're flying into because, you know, the NFL has competitive balance. Um, it's what allows the Packers to have a chance every year. You know, there's competitive balance in the NBA and college athletics. That's just not the case. 
Um, you know, Ohio State's going to have more resources. Michigan, probably. Georgia, Alabama, Texas, all the predictables. Um, it's going to be harder and harder, I think, for you know, Wisconsin and Iowa and, and schools like that, which have been really good, really strong programs. But now you're going to be judged by, well, you didn't make the playoffs here for a couple of years. You're a mess. And I, I just think it, it could be a little bit challenging. I applaud Wisconsin for, for trying. You know, it, it's taken a big swing you know, with, with the fundraising project going on with, for a new indoor football practice facility. And things are doing at Camp Randall, putting a heating unit uh, as we speak. Uh, um, you know, new turf at, at, at the stadium in case they can host some playoff games in, in December. But, you know, Ohio State, Michigan, their spring games are going to be on over the air national television, you know, that, because they're the blue bloods. And it's going to be harder and harder, I think, for a lot of other schools to break down the door and have that so called dream season. Hopefully, Wisconsin can be one of those programs. It sure is heck going to try. But, man, that's going to be a tough, it's a tough hill to climb. Do you think that's where it feels like the impatience of fans comes from now, specifically here in Wisconsin? I have to constantly talk my friends and my brother-in-law, who's going to see this, off the ledge <laughs> when the Packers don't have the season that they're supposed to or Badger football or basketball. Is it is it just because we're good now and we've been good for a while, but you two both know it hasn't always been that way? Yeah, the bar has been raised, and it's for sure. I mean, I look right now at, uh, you know, Northwestern basketball. Got to the tournament, won a game, you know, got bounced in the second round, but it's still, hey, great year, boo booey, man. You're, you were awesome to watch, and he was, and they did have a, a great year at Northwestern. That's where Wisconsin was 25, 30 years ago. But now it's, okay, now what? No matter what you – I mean, we see this with the Milwaukee Bucks. They won the title – you know, and two years later, the coach is gone and the guy that they hired was gone before the all-star break. It's just it's just the, the patience is bordering on non-existent, and certainly in the pro game and maybe more and more at, at the college game as well. And that can be a to me, that can be a dangerous thing. I mean, sometimes you're still better off, you know, given the, the current staff, you know, give them time. You, know, you might you're going to go through some bumpy stretches but give them time to figure it out. You know, I think with Wisconsin basketball, it had a, it had an unbelievable stretch, like six out of seven years making the Sweet 16, back-to-back -back Final Fours within a couple possessions of winning a national championship. So now that becomes expected in, in certain corners of a fan base. And rather than appreciating the remarkable success that they had at Wisconsin, have had at Wisconsin, it's do you feel like it's a birthright? And I think we all know that's just not the case. Um, but fans are fans. You know, that, that's probably not going to change. We could roll on between, you know, like should the playoff be 4 12 or 16? Or did like, like I would argue that I don't know that Nebraska, Maryland, or Rutgers has meant one thing to the conference other than making it bigger. I don't know that they've made it better even for one day, but we'll, you know, we could just keep going on and on. So I would like to divert off to uh, how difficult was it to say goodbye to the Brewer thing? Because it seems like that was a great little, wow, what a, you know, you get so uh, immersed in all this Badger stuff to have something that I don't want to say a lark because we all, you know, take the job seriously. But it seemed like, you know, what a great little different little outlet that you had there. Yeah, it, it was, John. But I, at the same time, I was getting a few more things on my plate over here in Madison. And I, and I felt like I wasn't giving it the attention that I needed to give it, you know, with, with the Brewers. If they were terrible, then maybe it wouldn't have mattered, but they're <laughs> not, which is great, right? Uh, but you know, there were years I couldn't even get out to spring training, which was, was a great mm -hmm. thing because I meant Wisconsin basketball was, was having a good run in the NCAA tournament. And even the years where I could, it would be a handful of days and then I'd have to come back and I'd be there, you know, be with the team for a week, two weeks, maybe three, and then gone. And I just, you know, I got used to being uncomfortable because you I just wasn't around it every day the way I was with Wisconsin football and basketball. And I, it was just, I was getting to a point where it was probably just better off for me. I gave him a heads up at the end of the COVID year. I said, you need to start thinking about, mm -hmm. you know, you got a pretty obvious choice. Even if I wanted to stay, I mean, Jeff Levering is really good. And that's what he does. He's a baseball guy. But even when I'm driving to the ballpark that last 
uh, the last series, like, am I really going to tell these guys <laughs> I'm done? Really? Really? Are you going to do that? But I, I did I, I did the right thing, and I think they're a really good crew and uh, crew of broadcasters over there. I put them up against anybody in, in baseball, and I've got a ton of respect for the organization. Still text those guys, and, uh, you know, um, Jeff and Brock and Sophia Minert and, you know, keep in touch with them, pull for them. Um, so, but now I can just sit back and be a fan. So uh, it's, it's good. Happy opening day. This is yeah. launching on opening day. Nice. All right, we'll wrap it up with Matt LePay in just a bit on the Inside Wisconsin Show. The Inside Wisconsin Show is brought to you by American Family Insurance, Aaron's Company, Lane's Farm and Fleet, Capital Credit Union, Festival Foods, Quick Trip, Miller Lite, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, and the University of Wisconsin Platteville. Hey, remember to subscribe on YouTube, leave a review, smash the like button, just get with us. So, JA, you've been to the house. Yeah. We finally got the basement finished here downstairs. So now I have like my own domain. And what's coming next is we're building the bar, baby. You got to have a bar. What Wisconsin basement doesn't have a bar? You got a place. Vince Lombardi had a bar in his basement. You sure. should have a bar in your basement. Like there's, there's the barometer. If it was good enough for Vincent T, then Trevor should have one as well. So wait, okay. so the bathroom's done? Bathroom's, bathroom's done, done, yeah. Yeah, All the, hard, the hardware is no longer turned inside out. Like it now, I can pull the drawer out. I did make a mistake. Yes, I did. Uh, yep, that's all better now. Yeah. Well, I and didn't the bar is next. Mistake. I thought that's just how they did it, so that you easier to pack and travel. They it. did. But, they did. But usually, you take the handles and flip them before you kind of close them off, and then you got to pull straight. It was dumb. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a handyman, but I can't wait to build the bar. I think I told right. you I bought. So I, the reason I bring this up is because the Packers tent sale is coming up, right? And you might recall last year. Yeah, you got the, uh, the tap system with Miller Lite, right? Yeah. I, I have no idea if I'm going to be able to pull that off. But by golly, we're going to have a fridge, and it's going to be stocked with Miller Lite. And some nice. things just yeah. never change with me, and that's okay. Or this show. Like the show, we like to think we're doing it better. And we get, get, But uh, like that, that hasn't changed. We're still here to be very pro Miller Lite. Yes, pro Miller Lite, pro Wisconsin. Roll, build a bar in your basement because that's exactly what you're supposed to do when you live here in Wisconsin. Miller Lite keeps it simple. I want a, I want a simple bar, nothing crazy, not going to be a wet bar. I just want a fridge and potentially a tap of Miller Lite in my basement. Is that wrong? That's not wrong. And, and, and maybe some things for making old fashions. One or two possible. There's a you, should have a, you should have a little of that and a little bitters back there and some stuff like that. Yep. We'll make it work. Got to have Miller Lite. Times change, but you can always enjoy the great taste of Miller Lite. Taste like Miller time. To get Miller Lite delivered right to your door, visit MillerLite.com slash Inside Wisconsin, or you can pretty much find it anywhere they sell beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories per 12 ounces. Uh, did you see the ad? We got to welcome J.J. Watt to the Miller Lite family. Oh, there you go. He's one of even us. Though, He's one of us. Even though he cost us big wins and... While he was in Houston and left the team to flounder in East Lansing and Columbus. Yeah. Well, and now he's bringing it all back home and is one of the Miller Lite promoters, just like me and you and a lot of other people before us, like Bobby. We're never going to get him. We're never going to get him as a guest because I keep disliking him. I dislike him a little bit more every time. No, we are. I actually was in touch with his people and they said, uh, let's chat closer to the season. So he likes soccer. He is and in England right now. Right? Yeah, so, oh, well, that's fine. We'll get him Everything there. I can say to him, I can say from a very safe distance. <laughs> True. <laughs> like, <laughs> cheers to a Miller Lite. All right, there here we go. go. Back to Matt. We're back to wrap it up with the voice of the Wisconsin Badgers, Matt LePay, here on the Inside Wisconsin Show. I wrote down, Matt, that consecutively, if you were serving a prison sentence, you would have served 67 years behind the mic here at Wisconsin <laughs> Sports, okay? Consecutive <laughs> years, 36 and 31. <laughs> Finally, somebody said we should probably put this guy in the Wisconsin Broadcasters Hall of Fame 2024. Congrats. That's <laughs> that's awesome. Prison sentence. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, well played, Trevor. That's good. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you. I um when when I got the phone call, I thought, oh, well, they must have a convention. They want me to go speak to somebody or whatever. <laughs> or hey, can you go introduce somebody for the Hall of Fame? Um, but yeah, when Michelle Vetterkind from, from the Broadcasters Association reached out, it was, 
it was very, very cool. Very, and yeah, another example of my advancing age. Um, props to uh, props to my guy Wayne Larrabee, who I think may have nudged a few people. Jeff Tyler over at iHeart, uh, the same thing. But yeah, it's it's uh, it, it's an honor for sure. Looking forward to it this June. So you start thinking about a thousand people. Um, without them. Uh, but I'm not even in the mix for something like that. But I appreciate I appreciate the uh, the, the comparison prison sentence. Sorry, the analogy being with the Badgers. That's awesome. bro, bro, <laughs> bro. Jeez. All right, you brought it up. Tell us about the Larvy and the Pay Podcast. Yeah, you know it's something that we had wanted to do for a while. I mean, I knew Wayne back when he was um, calling games for that pro team a little south of you know, <laughs> south of the border. Heard of it. Uh, because he worked a lot of college games and, and I uh, always admired his, his work. He and Kevin Harlan were like the guys, like I could take a little bit of this, a little bit of that and, and then form it into my style. Um, but yeah, it, we, we are in the midst of our second year doing this. We, we try to, you know, sometimes it's just the two of us. Other times we'll get some either local, you know, state guys or, or men or women or, or you know, national broadcasters, media folks as well. So we do it a couple times a month. We're not probably as consistent as you guys, but um, it, it's it's great fun. He's, a, he's so he still has his fastball, obviously. You know, calling the Green Bay Packers. So uh, we, we do have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> oh, my first question was going to be was not going to be Have you ever called a game from Wapan? But I, I feel like that now needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> that should be in there, thanks to Trev, right? I don't know. I haven't been home. Isn't that where the big state prison used to be in Wapana? No, there's one of them there. There's a yeah, few. okay. Yeah, the Mean Machine, voice of the Mean Machine. Coming yeah. back right now. Yeah, with Paul, the wrecking crew, number yes. 22. And uh, <laughs> by the way, why they ever made the second, uh, there's two movies that should never have been made. They made another Brian song, which I have no idea why. Mm -hmm. And then they made another uh, Longest Yard, which was dumb. I don't care yeah. that Dan Patrick was in it or whatever. So anyway, no, all right. Burt Reynolds. You got to go with the Burt Reynolds version. And it's not even close. Absolutely. It's not even close. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I know we're coming out of it, but I still, uh, you know, it's 28 degrees where I sit right now. Uh, what's your favorite wintertime activity? <laughs> uh Having an old fashioned on a fish fry night. That's about it. Yeah, All right. Not very good. Great outdoorsman. Uh, very yeah, good. That, that's my favorite wintertime activity. Okay. Well, I'm going to follow up with this, although I think you gave the answer. Uh, uh, you're sitting at home. Beer, old fashioned, or cherry bounce? Old fashioned. Yeah. You, you've totally become one of us. Uh, mm -hmm. Back in the day, were the Badgers legends or were they leaders? <laughs> they were leaders. They were leaders. Who else were leaders? Name name two other teams that were leaders. Ohio State yep. was a leader. Um, I'm trying to remember. Was Illinois a leader? Illinois was a leader. There you go. Along with yeah. Indiana, Penn State, and Purdue. Good knowledge. Uh, we've talked about a lot of broadcasters. Did you ever get to meet, did you know Earl Gillespie? Only on the phone. Did some couple phone interviews with him. Never had the chance to meet him face-to-face. -face. When I moved here, I was listening to some clips. I thought, oh, my God. This guy is unbelievable, but only had a chance to talk to him on the phone a couple times. Okay, yeah, Trev, do you know him? He was it was a Badger voice for a hundred. Well, he was everybody's voice for a while. Like I think he was the only guy. He was like Marv Albert. He was the only guy that did games in Wisconsin, mm. like Marv in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, hunt, fish, or golf? Golf, poorly, Excellent. but golf. All right. Uh, in his career, how many threes did Andy Kowski take as a Badger? <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, Five. Oh wow! You were, he took four. Wow! How many? He was a make? dunker. He can dunk. He can elevate. He was an athlete. How many did he make? One. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> now, where it was or what it is, I have no idea. Uh, but nor do I. I've forgotten um, all about that. <laughs> Brewers over and under this year, seventy-six and a half wins. Ooh, I'm a homer, man. Uh, they're going to surprise. Uh, over, Good. over. Um, you talked about going to the Coliseum, and the Olympics will be there in 2028. Is there an Olympic sport you think would be fun to call? Uh, you know, it, it's a boring answer because of basketball. It's just I call a lot of that. Um, if you're if you're looking for something different, I mean, basketball is the first thing that, that, that comes to mind for me. Olympic basketball would be would be a lot of fun. Good, long as you didn't say track and field, I'm in. Uh, have you ever seen just one deer? 
No. And that's why I try to tell people that we're up north. I said, be careful. You see one, you're going to see two, three, four, something like that. So just, just be ready. You know, you don't, don't think you're in the clear when deer number one crosses the road because he's got company. So I'm going down to the Texas relays here in a minute in Austin. I thought Roger Clemens was from Texas. Tell me the truth. He's from Vandalia, Ohio. He was a, he was a classmate until he moved uh, to Texas, I think sophomore year. Um, yeah, he was a decent athlete. At, but his older brother, Randy, was a really good basketball player. And I think he played at Earlham College um, in Indiana. But Roger was, yeah, he was he was good. And then he left. And then several years later, I'm watching him in the College World Series with Texas. He's going, damn, he got better. <laughs> uh, and he's not in the Hall of Fame, but he's a Hall of Fame. He's Hall did, of Fame talent. Did, sure. uh, did you ever face him? Did you ever, like, on a Little League team or anything? Like, you're – Pretty much contemporaries. We did, yeah, which he would have zero reason to remember. Um, but, yeah, it was uh, it was like seventh, eighth grade, whatever, like summer baseball. Um, but he wasn't – I don't think he was pitching, actually. He may have already uh, – you know, he'd pitched the day before. He was playing shortstop at third base, something like that. But, yeah, he – no idea in his Vandalia years that he would be who he became – you know, one of the greatest pitchers ever in, in Major League Baseball. Yeah, so it wasn't one of those where like, wow, okay, he's going to play in the majors and maybe I should go into broadcasting. That, it was not that cut and dried back then. No, well, for me, I knew I was never going to play in the majors, <laughs> so I thought that probably wouldn't be in athletics. Either as a coach, not smart enough to do that, but I'll get into broadcasting. But no, with Roger, it was, again, his brother Randy, was he was the star. Huh. Um, but Roger, as I said, good, but did we have him pegged as a big leaguer? No, we weren't that smart. That is amazing. And like I said, he sells himself as a total Texan. Like, I don't, you know. Well, long enough. I mean, he would he would have been, what, 17 or so when he, you know, yeah, sophomore year, 16, 17 years old. So I'm a Wisconsinite. I've been here for 35. You know, my first 26 years, I was, I'm not Ohioan anymore. So I, don't know. I can sell, I'll, I'll I can sell myself as a cheesehead. He can sell himself as a Texan. I've lived here 25 years, and I'm still like a Wisconsinite through and through. <laughs> so <laughs> you go by my house, and you don't see any Yukon flags hanging around. You, you know, none either. of those things. But you can tell the guy who's a Packer fan when you go by my house because they're <laughs> hanging out. So anyway, <laughs> uh, that's true. Yeah, I, I looked at that, and I just thought, and it wasn't. It wasn't about this. Like I was doing, going through, looking at guys who had done stuff at the Texas Relays, and there's Roger Clemens. And although he pitched, they have honorary guys that come through, you know. And I'm reading and like, oh, he went from Dayton, and I'm like, and then I look closer, and like he's not even from Dayton, right? Like that's, you, it's kind of like being from Green Bay. I'm not from Ashwaubenon, and I'm not from De Pere. I'm from Green Bay, like, right? Mm -hmm. Like he's, you know, he's he's not Dayton. He, you guys have the same hometown. That is amazing to me. Two Hall, well, no, only one of you is in the Hall of Fame, though. He should you're be. going into the Wisconsin Hall of Fame, and that Just guy's not in. He should be. He should be in the Hall of Fame. There's another guy from my hometown, though. He plays offensive line for the uh, Detroit Lions, Taylor Decker. So there's just, you know, Vandalia, Ohio, is just oozing with, yeah. well, athleticism with those two guys and then whatever I do. But, <laughs> yeah, we, we got, there's some claim. Yeah, we, you know, Taylor Decker, he's a heck of an offensive lineman for the Lions. Went to Ohio State. So Ohio State and the Lions. Let's introduce those two things into the show. Nothing makes an sure, Wisconsin sure. show yeah, better than those two things. Inside Wisconsin, this is called <laughs> a Buckeye and a Lion. Yeah. Hey, I'm glad hey, we're at the end. Of the Butler Aviator is what he is. I'm telling you what, we're glad this is getting to the end because we like you a little less with everything we keep bringing, bringing here in the end. <laughs> so, uh, Matt, thanks so much. I can't wait to. Uh, yeah, you'll be out here in Pas Piscataway. Well, at least you get Bam at home. That'll be a fun game, huh? That'll be good. Yeah, their schedule's a little, uh, it's a little salty. You know, Bama here at SC, Oregon comes to, uh, yeah. to Camp Randall. Penn State comes to Camp Randall. Mini. Uh, this is this is a rather daunting schedule. Should be fun, though. Well, we will enjoy Western Michigan and South Dakota, and then mm -hmm. we'll just hope for the best after that. There Absolutely. Very good. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Good to be with you guys. Take care.
okay, note to self, don't compare yeah. a Hall of Fame induction with a prison sentence. Maybe that was just a bad... Uh, yeah, I was kind of wondering where the analogy goes. <laughs> <laughs> long time. The, uh, the idea was a long time, and the fact that yeah. it took that yeah. long to get the guy like that in the WBA Hall of sure. Fame. Man. Yeah, and then it got, you know, it's always confusing. Are sentences running concurrently, or are they running consecutively? There's a lot of stuff in there, but I think we know where you were headed. Yeah. Well intended. Man has worked a long time, done a really great job, both in service and in quality, and thus deserves to be a Hall of Famer. That's exactly what I was. I don't know if it didn't come out that way. Yeah. Right. Anyway. And so, then obviously, think- after he's inducted, every three months we'll have to meet with his parole officer to see if he gets to stay in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> God. Sometimes I write these things down. I'm like, oh, that'd be funny. And then I say it. I'm yeah. like, what? Out loud, it was a different story. Listen, it's a I, big uh, head and it's bald. I don't always know what's running through it. No, you have no idea. There's a lot <laughs> cooking up here. A lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Our thanks to Matt LePay. I, I can't help but remember what we talked to Kevin Harlan about, right? When I said, how lucky are we in Wisconsin yeah. to have the guys behind the mic that we do? And, and Matt talked about them. Um, and he's one of them. So that was really, really special. Yeah, it's a good crew for sure. Yeah. Uh, all right, a big update in the John Wisconsin world here. Th- yeah. This is uh, this is John Wisconsin today, not so much John Wisconsin yeah. of yesteryear. So this is a big deal, man. The floor is yours. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know that this is hearkening back to my days of my youth, unless it's when I, I remember when my mom always tells me when I was in sixth grade, she said I uh, I was going to be a sportscaster and I was going to attend the University of Missouri. Now, I had no idea when I was in sixth grade, the Missouri even had a good journalism school or why. I don't know what it was, uh, but I did that. And lo and behold, um, I ended up here in Connecticut for the last 25 years almost. So uh, what I'm getting at, I, I've mentioned it before. It's the first time I mentioned it here. So John, Wisconsin is kind of the end of John, Connecticut, Um uh, my contract runs out at ESPN at the end of June, and I have decided that that will be the end. I will. I'm gonna. I'm gonna leave the company. I'm gonna um, sort of retire from Sports Center. I'm gonna get to do a few track and field things. I'm gonna get to continue to do the Boston Marathon and the New York Marathon, which I love, and some NCAA track meets and some SEC stuff. Um, so I guess maybe I'm not leaving. I think I am, um, and. I am like incredibly um, excited about that. You know, like I've, it's been a good run. As we, Bill Pito would tell you, it's been a good run, Shug. Uh, so I feel like it's been a good run and the operation has changed. Uh, I don't know that it's passed me by, uh, but it's taken its toll and I want to still be able to do the best shows I can. And I don't know that in years 26 or 27 that I, I have the stamina to, to go through it again. So um yeah, it's kind of, I know John Wisconsin is always kind of selfish because it's me talking about me, but um, this is really kind of seems that way that uh, I'm done. And where I go next, if I don't know that I'll be back to Wisconsin or Missouri or Arkansas or Phoenix or South Carolina. I, I don't really know what's quite next. I have some things in the fire, but um, Sports Center will not be it anymore. So uh, 25 years and one month. And I will be done for a guy who really thought someday, wow, if I could, if I could have just gotten that job that they gave to Chris Roth and in 1999, my whole life would have been different. Um, but here I am. So, and um, it's it's like the guy said, you know, like I'm, I may not have. Uh, there's a great writer. His name is uh, Douglas Adams, and he wrote. Uh, he said. Um, Uh, I may not have gone where I intended to go, but I think I ended up where I needed to be. And uh, so that's sort of where it is. Mic Uh, drop. And luckily for you, uh, because of you, I get, I stay connected to home all the time because I get to do this goofy show. So (laughs) I can put that on and, you know, put the W on. Right. And and John Anderson on inside Wisconsin will live on. Just because those four so, letters. Yeah, will... right. Like, you have not fired me. I am leaving ESPN of my own accord. Yeah. At least it feels that way. Yeah, um, it, amid so many people that have not been that lucky over the last few years um, who have been let go or or got out because they felt the Turk coming. Um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to, it looks like, you know, leave on my own terms. And uh, it's 
I wouldn't have envisioned this when I showed up in uh, May of 1999, right? When Charlie Steiner was running through the halls yelling, follow me, follow me to freedom, um, you know, and, and here I am. So, um, mm-hmm. and yeah, and you have, yeah, right now you have not fired me. We'll see. You're like, oh, if the guy didn't no. work on ESPN, I don't know if he's got any value here. Uh, well, so we'll wait and see. We'll see what happens at the home office with my future in this thing. Uh, uh, the home office says it's all good to go. You're good to go. Uh, yeah. I don't. Even Everybody know, says like, that, and then you know, then they take some time to think about it. You know, whatever. So whatever. Um, mm-hmm. When you look back, 25 years, if I just may, for just a little bit, it it's. I know it's been difficult on you to see some of your longtime friends not be with the organization anymore, right? Kenny Mayne yeah. and the list goes is long, but there's still some that are still there, right? Steve Levy and John Butchergross. And yeah. I think it's TV's Steve Levy and TV's John Butchergross. But yeah, um, it's actually yeah. Steve TV Levy. Okay. And television's John Butchergross. All right. Well, <laughs> close. Um, th- yeah, they're the only two that haven't abandoned me. Linda Cohn went out to. Los Angeles and VP SVP went to DC and Kenny left and you know, all kinds of these people, all the, all the original gangsters, you know? And I think that so much of, and listen, you play this down all the time. Every time I bring this up to you, my childhood was all of those names on sports center. And so mm-hmm. many other people grew up watching you and Dan Patrick and Kenny Mayne and SVP and all these guys that started mm-hmm. on ESPN news and today are still on Sports Center at some level, and some aren't. Um, yeah, no. uh, and you you said it was a it was a little harder than you thought it was going to be because now you're getting people to reach out to you like, whoa, this is really happening, huh? Yeah, that part's that part's a little different. I I didn't know that so many folks would be like, oh, hey, you know, heard the news, good for you. It's amazing how many people seem to be jealous. Like, oh man, I can't believe you're, you know, they don't want to equate it to a prison sentence, but they're like, wow, you're, you know, good for you to, to get out on your own. There are a lot of people that, you know, work and, and, um, and would like to, and just haven't yet. But, uh, and I'll be honest, I came at one of the best times you could have come. Um, I've been really lucky to get here when the place was still growing and growing and growing and we were acquiring stuff. Um, and yet almost there was still a foot with everything. Like I've done shows with Bob Lee, who was here from day one. Um, Chris Berman was here and super active when I got here. Dan, I've done shows with Dan Patrick. I've done shows with Keith Oberman, Larry Beal, uh, like almost everybody from the original wave until the ones that have come through now. Um, the difference is like, there are people now that work in the morning because my day part's not there. Like, I don't even know, like, who's that person on the television? Every once in a while I have to go in. Like when I went and was visiting with my boss about leaving and I'm there at 10 AM, like, who are these people on, they work here. Have they, nobody's cleared this with me. How do I not know who these people are? Um, and you just don't work in those day parts. Um, uh, but I've been really fortunate. Yeah, I got to work with kind of everybody that's a who's who at some point. And all of them were great to me. You know, they were all, um, you know, really good. And then I worked with a bunch of people that he'd be like, that person worked at sports center. I've never even heard that name before. Um, I'm just glad I wasn't one of those people, you know, in the end, that's what I really hope after 25 years, somebody just remembers I did the show. Cause there are a lot of people that go through and you're like, that guy did a sports center or they did one. Right. Like, I think I leave. Um, I, and I would never argue with Linda very far. But I think by the time it's done, uh, I will have done Sports Center more than anybody else in the history of the show, which is a hell of a thing. That you know? is a hell of a thing. Yeah. And I believe and that makes you. Ones. That's regular. That ones. Makes... If you put it, if you put like re-air hours and stuff in when it, you, the old wheel went. Yeah. I crush it. Yeah. So yeah. I don't yeah. know if that's good or bad. I don't know if I've helped America or not. You say you grew up on it. I always tell people if, if Sports Center had been there when I was a kid, when I was eight years old, I'd have never left the house. It would have been right. terrible. I wouldn't have got to school. I've been a truant. So it didn't matter how many times the same sports center played over and over in the morning. It was you for three straight hours until some other programming kicked on and you couldn't start your day without it, which officially, by the way, makes you a who's who too. I don't know that I know that you would probably be hard to admit that yourself. You definitely have been on sports center the most. And at the end of the day, there's not going to be a single person that has come to know the brand that doesn't know you associated with the sports center brand, man. Special stuff. Way to go. I appreciate it. Thanks. I always say uh, I'm near the top, at least, you know, alphabetically. (laughs) You are. There is that. (laughs) 
All right. Well, we appreciate chatting about that. All right. Thanks to Matt LePay for joining the show today. Thanks to John for 25 years of service. We got a little bit of time left. Can I come and have one more tour? Is that cool? Can I come out there and just do that again? That was the time of my life. I have to look. I think we finally have reopened uh, for friends and family. As you know, as Kenny Mayne has often said during home run calls, ESPN does not offer public tours. Uh, one, of my, <laughs> one of my favorite home run calls. You know, you'll take a trip around the bases and a reminder, ESPN does not offer public tours. Uh, but if you know somebody and you do, we can probably, you know, you know, Bucci, uh, we could get around. I will say this. That's the only thing I'll tip. I don't know what the last show is going to look like. I hope it's very much about the show, right? Kenny had a grandiose send off and it was great. And it was so him and it was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, I want none of that. I just want at the end of the show, go Van Pelt's next or whatever. Uh, the only concession I think we're going to make is I think the final show will be, um, instead of two anchors, it'll be myself and then Bucci and Levy. Six. <laughs> Which we've done one other one of those one time. And uh, it was, uh, we really, we, you know, everybody thinks they're funny. So by the time we got done, we thought it was really uh, fun. We did a strange little lead in that ended up with Bucci talking about bucket of chicken night. And, you know, and we started like you and I are in this two box, right? I don't know if you remember, we started the show in this three box. Right here we are at Sports Center night. And then Levy goes, "What are we doing?" And they took away the three box, and we were just all standing next to each other. <laughs> it just made it look. It made it look like we were in three different locations with backgrounds. And Levy's like, "This is the dumbest thing ever." And they dissolved them, and it was like we were just standing next to each other. So I don't know. We'll see if we can be that moronic as well one more time. We'll watch for it at the end of June. Can't wait. All right. Congrats, man. As Carry on. Wisconsin. Here we go. Season or four. as you were. What is it? As you hey, were. Hey, as you were. See you next time. Season four. Off and running. And you're here for it. As you were, Wisconsin. Remember to subscribe on YouTube. Leave a review. Smash the like button. Just get with us. The Inside Wisconsin Show is brought to you by American Family Insurance, Aaron's Company, Blaine's Farm and Fleet, Capital Credit Union, Festival Foods, Quick Trip, Miller Lite, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, and the University of Wisconsin Platteville. Shut up and sit down.